This is my very first clip on the 7th gen iPod Touch. And this is where the YouTube channel continues. What's up everybody? My name is Carl. And today I am finally reviewing Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Directed by Sam Raimi, this follows on from the events of WandaVision and Spider-Man No Way Home, where we find Strange having a nightmare that all becomes too real. Strange decides to help America Chavez, a new superhero from his nightmare, who has the ability to travel the multiverse. She is in danger from a threat that seeks her power. This threat, however, comes in the form of someone close to home in the MCU, Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch. Doctor Strange, Stephen Strange, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, as ever, Benedict Cumberbatch does a pretty decent job as portraying one of our favourite MCU characters. Strange, as well as having to help Chavez, must also come to terms with himself and truly question if he's really happy. I guess Strange in a way gets that answered for him later when he meets the evil version of himself. I definitely think Benedict Cumberbatch does a great portrayal of not only our iteration of Doctor Strange, but also the other versions of the character. Defender Strange. We only got to be with him for the opening sequence, but I do have to admit, he sort of low-key rocks the ponytail pretty well. I liked his costume design too, as well as this, the white glow that's produced when he uses magic. And in a weird way, I kind of liked it when he was a zombie version of Strange as well, made me really reminisce back to What If. Aside from being able to speak Spanish, this version of Strange is more or less akin to our version. Evil Strange. Yeah, this version was a tad bit creepy, kind of reminds me of that estranged uncle that comes to family events and just lurks in the corner but knows everything about you. I think this got a bit too personal. I guess this is what happens when you consume the Darkhold in its entirety, and yeah, if it means getting a third eye then I'm good. He certainly managed to pull off the sinister and gothic version of Strange decently. I liked how if Chavez had not made it into our Strange's reality, then we could have potentially ended up with a corrupted Strange. While I liked Cumberbatch's performances in the sequel, I think his acting was stronger in the 2016 film and Infinity War. Still, how cool is it for Bendit to come back as Doctor Strange? Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maximoff, played by Elizabeth Olsen, Let's be honest, this film should have been called Scarlet Witch in the Multiverse of Madness because Elizabeth absolutely stole the show. Wanda's motivations are evident from the get-go. After the events of WandaVision, she's found out her kids exist in other realities. Why not try and be with them? Well, I don't think this was how I would envision it, but yeah, I guess if you wanted to be with your kids, I would guess you'd do anything. Probably not go on a rampage across the multiverse and try and kill a kid to get her powers. It's a bit too much. Wanda as the antagonist would make logical sense, having been corrupted by the Darkhold. She's determined to be with her children. I personally loved her character arc throughout this film. She definitely was terrifying. <laughs> Her movements, her physical appearance and presence definitely makes her a force not to be messed with. Like, can you imagine being the Illuminati and thinking, we'll handle your witch? How is that working for you Illuminati? In many ways, her arc was similar to that of Doc Ock from Spider-Man 2. Both were corrupted by powerful things, had the determination and ruthlessness, realised that they had become a monster and nobly sacrificed themselves for the greater good. Not a coincidence that the director for Spider-Man 2 is also Sam Raimi. I will not die a monster! I don't think she is dead by the way. I'm pretty sure this won't be the last we see of the Scarlet Witch. No surprise either that a solo film has been greenlit for 2024. Favourite sequences, wander in and escape in the mirror dimension. I love the visual effects for this particular scene. Doctor Strange always has the coolest visual effects. You definitely get that sense of feeling trapped and being enclosed when the mirror dimension lashes back, becoming these almost icicle shards. Love how Wanda used this dimension to her advantage and escapes using the reflections. 
Her escape is a truly tense moment. The use of music helps build that suspense, as well as the eerie way the lighting is, as well as the editing. The way she crawls out of the gong is so ugh, freaky. Travelling throughout the multiverse. This was such a highlight for me. It was so fun to see this and how creative the visual effects were showing us the various realities and how they are presented. We had a cartoon world, a Jurassic world, a volcanic world, and not to mention a world of paint. The universes are endless. I hope in the future we can explore some of these worlds in future MCU projects. I guess in a way we touched upon some of them in What If, but certainly live actions of these worlds would be cool to see. Strange vs Evil Strange. The music battle between these two was fun. Yeah, I admit it was a little cheesy for them to use music notes as weapons, but you have to admit it was creative. I like how we heard different symphonies, with Evil Strangers being more sinister in retaliation to our Strangers more dramatic and softer melodies. Still, it was enough for our Strange to defeat and kill the Evil Strange. The good points of this film. The multiverse introduction. It was a fun time looking into the different multiverse realms, at a glimpse at least. I enjoyed the various worlds we got to see and some of the attention to detail, such as the paint world, Hydraverse and the futuristic Stark realm. Mystical visuals. I think the Doctor Strange magic visuals are some of the most entertaining and aesthetically interesting things to see throughout the cinematic universe. The attributes in this film were quite playful. You certainly see this when Strange is fighting that one-eyed creature. Horror vibes. This is the first horror MCU film, and considering that this is still aimed at kids, it did a pretty good job of it. I think certainly they did a great job of making Wanda truly scary. The scene where she crawls out of the gong definitely had ring vibes. And when she comes out of the red mist and kills Charles Xavier in her mind, yeah, her face looked really scary. I think the bit that made me jump was where they are in the tunnels trying to get to the doorway to get to the Book of Vishanti and BOOM! Jump scare. I was like... Wanda's character arc. I've already mentioned it, but man, her arc in this film was good. So good that I'm glad she's getting a solo film. From being the antagonist who had a reasonable method of going after Chavez to full on going on after her herself, a corrupted evil Wanda is epic, a great villain with a sympathetic motivation. The bad points of this film. Second half. I feel like once Strange and Chavez were captured by the Illuminati, the film just became goofy and went downhill. I don't know if by this point they decided to reshoot the film, but it felt different in places. Maybe there was a really high expectation coming off of No Way Home, which could have led to the film changing partway through post-production. Illuminati were underdeveloped. Don't get me wrong, it was so cool to get the introduction of the Illuminati in this film, but certainly with the cameos we got, they came across as underdeveloped. I found Captain Carter to be arrogant and kind of a bad imitation of Steve. Granted, this is an alternate version and not the same one from What If, but yeah, wasn't really a fan. While I loved seeing Reed Richards' debut, I think he was naive into thinking that he could reason with Wanda. Okay, maybe he wanted to deal with Wanda without violence, but it was bold of him to assume that she'd be like, okay, I'll be reasonable. Poor black pole. I don't find killing them off as a problem, just shows Wanda's persistence and brutality, but yeah, it was a kind of in and out situation. We didn't really get too much time with these characters to really care about them. CGI. How is this bad in the second half of the film? Am I crazy or did it get worse? I think you could definitely see this in the Illuminati flashback. It was evident it was a green screen background, not as polished as some of the visuals we've seen before in other MCU films. Yeah, I think the thing I disliked the most in terms of the CGI was the third eye. It just seemed like poor Photoshop or just a last minute add-on that they forgot to edit. Missing 15 to 30 minutes. Yes, I'm that guy who believes that this film should have been longer, but trust me, it did. The third act just happened in a blink of an eye. 
I feel as if they cut parts out that we might have needed to see to show us how we got to these certain points. I think sometimes this extra time helped flesh out certain scenes. I personally felt like everything was kind of rushed by the third act to preserve time. Writing. Again, I feel like this is linked to the supposed change of the film we get when our heroes get captured by the Illuminati. One thing that stuck out was the scientist version of Christine, who had presumably helped build the prison cells that they kept Strange and Chavez in. But when it came to getting Chavez out of the cell when Wanda was coming, how did Christine struggle to get it open? Like seriously, again it's to build tension and suspense, but I'm not buying it. Then later on, she with ease manages to remove Strange's tech arm cuffs. Tell me I wasn't the only one who noticed this. I'm confusion. I like how when Strange and Chavez get drugged by the tea, that when Strange gets affected by it, it takes him a while to really suffer from it. Whereas with Chavez, she gets knocked out instantly. Like, where's the logic in that? So in conclusion, what would I rate this? Well, originally I gave the first Doctor Strange film a nine out of 10. Back when I had most films that rating or above, I would actually give that solo film an 8.25 out of 10. It's a pretty underrated MCU film in comparison to what came later and before. Multiverse of Madness gets a 7.75 out of 10. I enjoyed the introduction to the multiverse, the horror elements, the mystical visual effects and Elizabeth Olsen's character arc and return as Wanda Maximoff aka the Scarlet Witch. However, I was disappointed with the second half of the film. The Illuminati were great, but felt poorly developed. The CGI places looked evidently unfinished. The writing seemed to have gone downhill from the second half. And certainly, the film felt as if it was missing a good 15 to 30 minutes to tie things together. I guess this film truly felt like madness. So comment down below what you thought of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. What were your favourite characters, what were your favourite sequences, and what do you think we'll see Strange deal with next? Like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!